Hey guys, what is up? Bethany at House Life Nails here, back with another indie rundown. Today is going to be set up a little bit differently because this collection is a little bit different than the ones I usually share. Usually I share swatches and kind of macros and all this kind of stuff for the polishes. However, Holly at Sash Polish came up with the idea to launch an ombre creams collection. She has a light, medium, and dark in three different colors to launch. We've got a pink, yellow, and gray set. And they are formulated to give you the perfect ombre look, effortlessly, seamlessly, beautifully, wonderfully, fabulously done. Don't mind me, I'm sorry, I'm hyped up on coffee. Anyway, so for those of you that don't know what an ombre is, it is taking a couple of colors within the same color, shade, color, family, and blending them together to get kind of a flawlessly seamless transition between the shades compared to a gradient where you're taking multiple colors and blending those together. So ombre is just all the same shade. So like I already said, she is starting with three. She is going to add to this collection over time. If you have a suggestion for a color you would like to see in the ombre collection, leave it below and I'll make sure Holly sees your comments. Okay, so because this is a creams collection, Holly didn't want, you know, five swatchers to share five different pictures of a cream polish. She wanted to spice it up a little bit, so she assigned each of her swatchers a different task. Two are just plain swatching, one is doing art, one is doing stamping, and I got the gradient, ombre, whatever you want to call it. That's one of my favorite things to do, so I, I may have volunteered for that. But that's what I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. I will have the other artists link below if you want to click and see just regular swatches, if you want to see how they stamp. I believe one of them is testing water marbling. So I will link everybody below so that you can check those out as well. I will have Holly's Instagram and her storefront link below. I'm sure she will have a ton of pictures on there leading up to the launch, which is April 28th, by the way. So I'm going to be sharing with you two different ways you can achieve the perfect ombre look. One, the only tool you're going to need is a makeup sponge. I buy mine at Dollar Tree. It's You get 28 of them for a buck and the quality is totally fine. I just go there because it's cheap. And the other one is a no tools needed. So I'm going to walk you through step by step with the first one, um, which I'm going to do the pink because it was my favorite of the group. And then I'm just going to do kind of a sped up Instagram style tutorial for the yellow and the gray because I don't need to talk you through three different times. And then I am going to share with you one step by step walkthrough on the no tools needed. So hopefully it doesn't take too long for me to get through these. But let me share with you the names of the pinks so you can see we've got the lightest, the medium, and the darkest shade here. The lightest is Pinking Up Forever. The medium is Let's Pink the Night Away, and the darkest is Pink Slip. So let's jump into the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to get the perfect ombre look on your nails using these three and a makeup sponge. I am going to start with a base of the lightest shade in my ombre. When doing an ombre, you can get away with using the lightest color that you're going to be using for the blending. Because the colors are in the same color palette, it's not going to look really weird if you're putting a blue on an orange. If you are using multiple colors that are not in the same color palette, definitely use a white base so they don't muddle together because a blue sponge on top of an orange is not going to look the same as just a light pink over a dark pink, or a dark pink over a light pink, if that makes sense. I'm going in with a liquid latex barrier. This is Cuticula's um, Pear Martini scent. And if you don't have latex, don't worry about it. You can use tape. I mean, you don't have to use anything. It just makes the cleanup process a whole lot easier. So I will have this link below for you guys. And let's go in with the makeup sponge. I am going to start with the lightest shade on the bottom. And then go in with the medium shade. You're going to see there's a little bit of an overlap between the colors. That's going to help with the blending on the actual nail. Um, the colors kind of seep in together and have already started their own blend before you even get it to the nail. So it just makes the process a little bit easier. I'm going in with light pressure, light dabbing. If you push too hard, you're going to pull polish from the bottom. So just light pressure on these. Don't let the polishes absorb too much into the sponge or it's just going to be too dry. So try to go in while they're just a little bit wet. And do as many coats until you like the opacity. So you can see this latex barrier does a really good job. There is hardly any cleanup to, whoops, to go in. Um, yeah, just a really good peel there. I'm going to seal it all in with a glossy top coat. This is my favorite part of a gradient. It's just like the final cherry on top. The colors just blend a little bit more. It's so perfect. 
I love the top coat part of a gradient. You can see these three shades really blended so beautifully together. Don't mind all of my extra top coating. My nails are really curved so I have to get into the corners. So there are my swatch pictures of the gradient. Alright, wasn't that hard, was it? So the next color up we have the yellows. You can see them here. We've got the lightest, the middle, and the darkest shade. Names of these, the lightest is Highlight of My Life. The middle shade is... The medium shade is named Sunshine and Daisies. And the darkest is meant to be with two E's, like a bumblebee, because it's a bumblebee yellow color. So let's jump into a sped up tutorial of how these gradiented together, and I will also make sure I put up some pictures showing the finished look with these. And the final colors in the first installment of the Ombre Creams are the grays. I freaking love these. We have got the lightest is 50 shades of Earl Grey. The middle is grayed out. And the darkest is Periodic Table of Elephants. That is the funniest name ever. So let's hop into the sped up tutorial of how this Ombre turned out. And a couple pictures as well. Alright guys, so that is how you do just kind of the traditional ombre look. Let's hop on over to my how-to for the no tools needed, very simple, very easy, very, very quick style ombre. To start this mani, I'm going to go in with one nice thick coat of Stash Polish's Luncheon. This is a beautiful one coat white. Love it. Flawless. Yes. Now I'm taking the lightest shade, Pinking Up Forever, and I am just going to wipe off excess polish so it's not super, super wet. I'm going to swipe that across the nail. Sorry, we're getting washed out in color here. Ooh, I'm so sorry. Let's go ahead on in with the medium shade. Let's pink the night away. Same thing, we're just going to wipe off the excess polish so it's not too wet on the nail. And we're just going to swipe it across in the same direction as the tip of the nail. All right, let's go in with Pink Slip. This is the darkest shade, and we are going to get off the excess polish. Don't make it too dry like I kind of did. Leave a little bit of polish on there so you have a little bit of kind of wetness to work with the polishes. I'm going to go back in with the same technique, brushing off a little bit of the polish, and now I'm just kind of blending the colors together using my polish brush. Uh, doing the medium shade, now the lightest shade. And I'm just going to do this until I like how the blend looks on the nail. Uh, you can do as many layers as you think you need until you like how it looks. Just keep going until you're happy with it. You can see I didn't use any kind of latex barrier for, clean, for easy cleanup. 
Um, just thought I'd save myself a step and just go in uh, with a brush to clean it up in the end. So I think I'm going to end this with the medium shade to make sure that kind of pulls through a little bit more. Oh, there's the cleanup brush. I'm just using pure acetone and an e.l.f. concealer brush that I bought for a dollar. Cleaning up all the polish around the nail. That's how I get those crisp lines in my swatch pictures if you guys are wondering. And I'm going to seal that in with the top coat. Again, top coat just like ties it all together. Look at how pretty that looks when it's all sealed in. Wow. I love this finish, this kind of choppy, cool gradient. Hope you like it too. So I really hope you guys enjoyed learning two different ways to get that ombre look. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. I know it can be a little bit complicated and confusing at first, but just keep practicing. You will get it. Just takes time. Anyways, these are launching April 28th. I do not have a time off the top of my head. I'll be sure to include that in the description below. I will also have Holly's storefront linked as well as the other artists and swatchers sharing this collection. Be sure to set your alarms. These tend to go fast. I know there's been a lot of hype on her Facebook page, which I will have that link below too. We do many contests every month and you can win free polish. So I will have Stashinista's link below. But in the meantime, be sure to check out my Instagram. I will be sharing a couple of different nail art looks using these as well. And I think that's all I have for you guys today. So I'll see you soon with another Indie Rundown. Bye.